welcome. Uh, my name is Kate Tick and I work for Reltio. Uh, we're in the, this corner of the uh, exhibit hall, should you wish to visit us later. If you don't show up, I'll assume I did a really bad job. First of all, compliments to the city of Stockholm. What a view. Fantastic to be here, so amazing. Um, and thank you all for joining this presentation because I know that I've got competition for your time. And finally, a thank you to uh, Jeff, Alex, Malin and Katya for their presentations on the topics of master data management already this morning and setting the stage for this amazing area of data management. I hope I can uh, live up to the standards that they've set. So my talk today is going to combine a bit on digital customer experience and master data management and hopefully tie some of those themes together for you. Um, so let's start by talking about digital. It seems strange to actually start something talking about digital by telling you that I, I picked up a hard copy <laughs> of a magazine in an airport, you know, too much, too much traveling around. Um, and it was, there were two articles on the cover of that magazine that uh, inspired me I thought I'd use today. One of them was, digital doesn't have to be disruptive. And uh, it gave me plenty of food for thought because it resonated quite strongly with conversations I've been having with uh, colleagues, partners, data management professionals and, and clients in, in the space. And then in terms of customer experience, I'm sure that a number of you are also able to do two things at once, talk and click. So remind me if they don't keep up with me, OK? So this is the magazine. Digital doesn't have to be disruptive. On the topic of customer experience, there's been an awful lot of this in the news and in commentary at the moment. We seem to have moved from customer service to customer experience. I think part of the reason for that is because of the uh, increased move to subscription licensing. It's very difficult to have a business based on subscription unless you keep customers happy. So you can't just sell a big license anymore and run away. You have to renew that license. So big focus on the, the customer experience. But if you, if you read some of the commentary, one of the things that's coming through loud and clear is that whilst many of us are very happy to use automated apps and get personalized messaging, albeit, as Alex said, talk, thinking about the compliance and the data protection, one of the things that often gets missed is that if you're going to provide better customer experience, you need to empower your employees. So most of us, the minute something goes wrong on those automated channels, we want to speak to a person. And PwC did a really interesting study that I read recently, in addition to this article, um, on consumer in their consumer intelligence series, which said that actually what they want the minute they speak to a person is that the experience is convenient, that person is knowledgeable, that they're efficient and they're friendly. Well, it's very difficult to be all of those things if you haven't got information about that consumer at your fingertips and they're at the end of the phone, right? So yes, it's about personalized messaging, right time, right place, all of that in the marketing that goes out to you and I on our phones and our laptops. But it's also about at that point where that's really not cutting it and I want to speak to a person, the person also has to have that data available to them, okay? So the, au the authors of this article, this one, July, August, um, they work at a company, a graduate business called, called INSEAD. And their, their idea is that the best business results for many large enterprises don't come from total digital disruption. They come from adaptation. Um, so the first thing they did was define, well, what, what is digital transformation? Um, if you think this is a reasonable description, please raise your hand once you've had a chance to read it of what digital disruption or sorry, digital transformation is, adopting an organization strategy and structure to capture opportunities enabled by digital technology. Let's put it another way. If you really, really disagree with that, raise your hand. Perfect, you're all still awake. Brilliant. OK, well, that's a reasonable start. Then you don't all completely disagree with it. Um, so what they pointed out, this wasn't really new because computer and software have been introducing new ways of working for years. Um, but the difference, they said, was that digital is now not just something that is in the hived off area of IT. What it's doing is it's bringing data to uh, all parts of a company's value chain and to all of the people in the company. The thing that they pointed out that that also did, though, was make it very difficult for managers to understand what initiatives to prioritize um, and which opportunities to pursue. Um, so a lot of them think that you know, they've got to completely disrupt things. They've got to move entirely from physical to virtual channels. They've got to buy lots of new software. And they've got to maybe purchase a startup or two. Um, now, as I work for a relatively young software company, 
um, then you might, uh, that's, you might think that I agree completely with that point of view, especially the bit about buying lots of software and acquiring a startup. Um, and I agree with some of it. I don't agree with all of it. Um, so what I'm going to do in this talk is spend uh, 20 minutes or so talking about some of the, these themes with you. I'm going to explain, uh, based on uh, what the authors of this article thought, um, that there is a better way to focus on customer needs. They, they come up with five digital myths. So I'm going to focus on three of them and how you dispel those. But I'm also going to share insights from some of the data management experts that I've spoken to. I do a blog series called Modern Data Masters, um, and I speak to a number of people in the industry. Uh, what they think about how modern data management can really bring a business advantage to your business in terms of customer experience, as well as share some case studies with you. I hope that's OK. So are you sitting comfortably? At least these are padded seats. Everyone comfortable? Quick look at the view. OK, I'll begin. Right, so first, um, first myth. Myth number one. Digital requires radical disruption of the value proposition. The clue was in the introduction. Not really. Um, sometimes, in, by and large, it usually means using digital tools to better serve the known customer need. Now, let me ask you, are, how many of you have heard and are slightly tired of hearing the Uber story used as the ultimate example of digital disruption? Hands up. Excellent. OK, so the, perhaps the good news for you is that I'm not going to talk about how Uber is the largest taxi company not to own any cars and how Airbnb is the largest uh, accommodation provider that doesn't own any houses. OK, so um, the reason for that is that the, the companies in this article are actually not digital native. They are existing large organisations. Digital only or digital native implies a company like Uber that has always been digital um, and that quite possibly let's assume, probably doesn't need to transform yet because they started as digital. What they do is they disrupt in whole industries, and it's the large companies, the large enterprises in those existing in industries that get disrupted. And so they're the ones that need to transform. And what the article is arguing is that they should take an adaptive approach to that, an evolutionary approach to that, rather than a revolutionary approach. And the main reason for that, according to them, is that the fundamental customer needs that they are serving have not changed. Okay? So um, what they need to do is figure out how to best serve those needs with these new tools that are at their disposal. And in fact, what this team says is that if an incumbent, as in a large enterprise that didn't start digital, um, can use those tools to meet the customer needs better, then they can still do really, really, really well. And so that's where the Uber example becomes more relevant because what their arrival did was it gave all of those existing companies a bit of taxi companies a bit of a kick. Um, and it meant that they actually had to uh, think about how to meet their customer needs better. The customer needs is the same. They still need to get from A to B, but they have to differentiate themselves based on you know, service quality etiquette. So as an example, as a Londoner, suddenly it's become possible to pay a black cab with a card couldn't do that before. And according to the article, I mean, imagine that. You had to have cash. Um, not terribly convenient, especially um, like me. You never have any cash. You always have a card. Uh, but also, um, the example in here is how a Parisian taxi company ended up giving its drivers etiquette lessons, um, because perhaps they felt they needed to be slightly more polite. Um, so uh, when we talk about this uh, modern data management theme at Reltio, what we're talking about is how uh, incumbents can use digital technology um, and up-to-date techniques to improve on their existing value proposition. Um, so when we look at that, we compare to traditional master data management solutions. Um, you, and master data management generally was usually driven by IT. Um, and it was based on legacy technology. And it meant that only a small number of users, they used to call them, you know, probably still do data stewards, would see the output of, of that process. And um, what you end up with generally is m another siloed system in, in the business. Okay? So what we think is that modern data management techniques can help clients better meet their own customers' needs. And there's an example given in uh, the article about Marriott Group. And their CEO, he sounds like a really switched on chap, he, um, he talks about this war for the customer. Okay, so what, but what he recognises is that um, his competition 
are the digital native organisations like Expedia and, and Airbnb. Um, and he, he knows that technology is critical in winning that war, but he recognises the, the limitations of it. So he says, um, we're not going to out-Google Google. Google. Uh, so, but what we want is a community of people who can relate to us. So he's talking about using the technology as a platform, but the purpose of the platform is to engage with customers. Okay? Um, so I'm sure most of you have a favourite, if you're travelling a lot, you're coming to these conferences, you have a favourite hotel brand. Think about how perhaps they engage with you, how they could do better, uh, and why you collect lots of points and, and what you get from that. And if you're, if you're finding that you are getting benefits from it, then they're obviously doing a pretty good job improving your customer experience. And all, everything behind that is data. So Relto actually helped with some of this transition. And what we did was on the, the corporate B2B side, we replaced a, an old homegrown MDM system that wasn't giving the sorts of benefits that they needed with um, Relto Cloud, which is a software as a service MDM solution. And that enabled them to do things like give their corporate clients um, be a basic information, like a global view of the revenue spent, the nights, um, by account and to manage things like corporate hierarchy. So they were able to bring in Dun and Bradstreet data to do that. Um, and as a result, they were able to do things like Im improve their corporate loyalty and be able to uh, grow the account value. And not only that, they realized um, $700,000 uh, in total cost of ownership reduction. So um, we'll just zap back one there. <laughs> okay. So. I th the thing is, though, that if you speak to some of the executives in these large organisations, they're not leaping out of the bar saying, Eureka, for better customer experience, I need master data management. They're probably not mapping the two. And I know there's a, a very brilliant speaker called Scott Taylor, who many of you will have seen at conferences and who I've interviewed. And, and he, <laughs> what he says, and, and I quote here, he's known as the data whisperer, by the way. He said, look at the things that the CEO and the CIO are really putting their weight behind. They won't be saying they need more MDM. In fact, they could be saying that they need Customer 360 in their annual report and not even realise that they need Master Data Strategy to do that. Okay, so this is how far we are between making the link. But in terms of this first myth, um, fundamentally, what we're saying is that these organisations, what they do as a business hasn't changed. The value proposition remains the same. Um, but to win this war for the customer, they have to improve and evolve, and they need to use up-to-date technology and digital tools to do that. Um, and they need to focus, while doing that, as Arne Sorensen said, on their core client needs. Okay? And that's precisely what we think you know, having a modern approach to data management can do. Right, so myth number two. Digital is about technology. Guess what? It's really about the customer. Imagine that. So, it, based on my, I refer you to my earlier point. If we agree that the real purpose of digital is about being better able to serve your core customer needs, then that means that it's going to be about presumably having more effective operations, having better sales forecasting, more personalised services, all of these good things. Um, and the, the article says that digital is not about technology, it's about the customer, and what they actually say is here. So, of course, technology change is involved, and they highlighted the word involved. But if digital enables, even demands, the connection of formerly siloed activities for this purpose, then the company must often reorganise both people and technology. Okay, so let's look about at this in a bit more detail. So there's a lady that I interviewed recently called Blake Morgan. If you look her up on LinkedIn, she's a what's called a f one of these newfangled words. She's a futurist in customer experience. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to say expert and speaker and author. Um, so she's created this six-step do more framework. So D O M O R E, and it's all about how you um, focus on six things that will amaze your customers. Um, and what I asked her was about you know, what part does high quality data have? You know, she's, she's not a data management person, she's a customer experience person. So I said, what part does, does data have in um, the customer experience? And she said, you know, the idea really is to try and be thoughtful and empathetic um, and to really think about um, what your customers will want. And so data, she says, plays a huge role. Um, and if we look at this, she's saying you need to be able to use data to understand them and the M in this D-O-M-O-R-E is about modernise with technology. So 
you actually have to have modern technology if you really want to master your data. You cannot be doing this with your legacy systems. And we talked, I think Malin and Katya were talking a little bit about the legacy systems just now and how difficult it can be to incorporate those. So you, you can't get rid of them, but you need to be able to have modern things to lay on top. So technology, I would argue, is not just involved. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a critical component, but specifically modern technology solutions. Okay, so. It's a, not about trying to bend legacy technology out of shape, but what I would add to what the article says here is, is, is two things. One is about, it's about processes in an organisation, of course, and, but secondly, it's about reorganising people. And, and by association, it means you have to change the culture, which is really, really difficult. And that is why I'm going to leave that um, to someone like Nicola later, who will tell you that data governance is all about people, um, and it's, it's actually very, very difficult. So there are lots of people who can tell you how to tap tackle cultural issues um, much more uh, credibly than I can, but it's the people process and technology, of course. So going back to my bit, which is about the technology, let, let's just say that I think it's very important that whatever you decide to implement, it breaks down some of those organisational silos and it helps you get that relevant, timely customer data out to all of the people uh, in your organisation. So not just the data stewards that I mentioned earlier, of which there may be tens or perhaps hundreds if you're a large organisation, but the whole information consumer uh, organisation that you have. So people that need reports, and there could be thousands of those. So um, one example of uh, how modern data management can help break down si uh, silos and empower lots more end users is some work that we did with HP. And some of you may remember that in 2014, HP decided to split off its rather more profitable printer and PC business from its services and hardware um, business. And what they did was they, at the time, they ran separate systems for customers, partners, sales operations, and their B2B company information. So it was a really, really complex business. None of those things worked together and they were all in silos. And what they said was they didn't feel like they had control of their data. And that's come up a couple of times in the presentations so far today. So the business problems meant that they, they couldn't manage the sales compensation. They couldn't forecast correctly. They couldn't um, actually match a transaction to a channel partner because, of course, they largely sold through other or end organisations. Everything was very, very manual. And of course, they kept acquiring new businesses. And so it was very difficult to onboard all of this other data that kept coming in. So they decided to start with their B2B business. And to give you some context on that, the, um, the master data management solution they were going to go with would have to deal with 600 million company sites, 350 um, million actual um, companies. And then they have 350,000 channel partners. And what they were using was the entire Dun & Bradstreet world base. Okay, So this is a, a really big data, data problem. Um, so the other thing which was mentioned by uh, Katja and Malin was about the contracts they have with healthcare providers in region Stockholm. And of course, HP had different contracts with the OEM, with the partners. So they'd have OEM, they'd have resale. So that just complicated it even further. And then when I watched this uh, on one of our customer story videos. Then the guy said, and then he said, um, just to uh, put the icing on the cake, he said, we decided to acquire Samsung Print at the time. So that was another billion dollar business that I had to to bring into my project. So you could see him just sort of <laughs> slumping a bit. Um, so, but today, they, what they managed to do was put in, um, and it, it was Reltio, I mean, hands up, I work for Reltio. So the examples, they put Reltio in, they put it in the center of their ecosystem, and then they built out all of the other systems around it based on what the data was that had come out of it. So what they've managed to do is reduce their manual handling. So all of the transactions were handled manually before. They've reduced that down to just 10% now. 10% of transactions. Um, they've managed to drop their time from shipment to credit by 10 weeks. So that's um, a, just over 70% improvement. And it's now down to about 20 days. Just move that forward. Some of these are on here, but some of them aren't. Um, so you'll actually have to pay attention. There'll be a test. No, there won't. Um, and, uh, and so they are using the real-time ability to connect the data to do that. And they're, going, they're automating this matching and merging process so that they can get better and better at it. So when, I, when this um, story was written, they've, they've managed to get this shipment to credit down to 20 days, but it's still falling. And they're doing all of this while managing 1.3 billion objects. So if anybody has a concern about scalability, I know there's some very large organizations here, then scalability 
can, can, be, can be dealt with. Um, and more importantly, in terms of cost savings, they were able to, they've saved so far $12.5 billion on their total cost of ownership. So when this all kicked off, uh, which you can, there'll be a, a sum you can do in your head here. It was uh, a 10 year project called HP Market 2025. So, when do you think it started? Uh, and uh, so, what they did was they were looking forward 10 years. And, we, and again, a number of the presentations today have talked about how you can't just meet today's needs, you have to be able to have a future platform. Um, and what they realized was that to be a digital company at their scale, there was no way they could continue to keep doing everything manually. Um, they would have to change the way they did business you know, right from the core. Um, and if they wanted to move forward, connect up the data, they needed to be doing that in the cloud. They needed to be able to use things like AI. And they needed, fundamentally, to get the data out to the bits of the business at the speed of business, not at the speed of you know, calling up IT and saying, can I have it? And then saying, yeah, that'll be about ooh, six weeks. No, that's, that wasn't going to work. So. Um, that idea was supported by a gentleman called Tony Saldana, who's got a, a business book called Why Digital Transformations Fail. He ran uh, data management at Procter & Gamble for nearly 30 years ago. And he's really excited about what's happening in, in modern data management. So he said, 30 years ago, you were limited in scope and size and how much you could imagine the world in a digital lens. That has evolved and changed, and thank goodness for that, he said. Uh, newer, newer technologies, newer paradigms of looking at outcomes, and newer approaches to digitizing the world have assumed so much importance. So we go back to the HP example. They just also they did the B2B. They've now rolled out their B2B, B2C systems uh, with Relteo and with similar success. And so they're now all about managing their, their customers better. And the selection of, of a modern technology was, was core to doing that. But they had to remember to re-envision the customer journey. So that, you know, yeah, the technology enabled it, but it was all about them thinking about the customer journey first, building out the business systems to support that, not the other way around. Um, but they also needed to prepare for future change. And, and so the way that modern data management can help is to provide a platform for future growth. OK, enough about HP already. Myth number three. Digital requires overhauling legacy systems. And the reality is, and I must say, that just these myths are from here. They're not, you know, uh, what I'm saying. I'm just up here to, show, to share, I'm oversharing. Uh, it's, it's more often about incremental bridging. OK, so. Um, what they say in this, which is now becoming my, my Bible, as it were, uh, digital transformation may ultimately require altering back-end legacy systems, but starting with a sweeping IT overhaul comes with great risks. I think everybody would uh, agree with that. But what they suggest as alternatives is either you speedily develop front-end apps um, and slowly replace the legacy systems, or you put something in place that's going to interface between front and back end. And um, those are both options. I would suggest that perhaps an alternative might be to put something in that can help you do both of those things, but deliver new capabilities. Because you're not just all about trying to do what you've always done. You want to do something new, and you want to do these um, things that will help you be digital and win the war on who owns the customer. So if we go to Blake again, you're going to probably be very tired of this photograph <laughs> very soon. Um, what she said is, customers want products and services that are tailored to their needs. That's based in data. And you know, she actually did use, I'm sorry, the Amazon, the big A uh, example, where uh, many companies like Amazon uh, that are continually recognized for their amazing customer experiences have done that based on mastered customer data. So there's no getting away from it. You absolutely have to do it. But how do you go about gradually replacing legacy technology uh, whilst at the same time delivering better, faster, more personalized experiences? So the example I'm going to use here is a customer of ours called AstraZeneca. Some of you may be familiar with that. Now, I could ask you to raise your hand and say, you know, how many people use Rhinocourt? How many people use that? That might be a bit too personal. I won't do that. Um, but I'm sure most of you have interacted at some point with a drug or medicine that comes from AstraZeneca. So they are in year three, nearly at the end of year three of a three-year project, where they are replacing 67 different legacy MDM systems with three, one in each region, so APAC, Europe, and America. Um, they are managing millions of records and of more interest to them as well. They're also bringing in lots and lots of different market data, which gives them insight on what's going on. and they 
rolling that out to over 140 countries. So it, it's a big, it's a big project. Um, and the difference between what they're doing now and their previous system is not just the scale, but in the multiple ways it's enabled them to improve their business. So they're not just redoing what they did before, they're going for what, what, what new things can we deliver. So they're able to update, yes, hundreds of data stewards, but also thousands of information consumers across their business with updated master data, customer data every day. They are able to bring in easily new sources of market data, which gives them insights. Uh, on how they're doing uh, in the market. They're able to empower the reps who are going out to these healthcare providers with information on the spot via their mobile devices. So what publications did this provider write? What clinical trials are they running? Um, what drugs do they commonly recommend? And you know, what's their speciality? And then in addition, We've touched in some of the, the talks today about things like GDPR. Well, how do you answer a subject access request if you don't have a single view of an individual? So they're able to actually manage all of their consent for marketing communications through the same hub. So it gets updated in one system, it gets changed and synced out automatically. So that's another aspect of what they're doing with this single view of client. So all of those things have improved their global ability to master, track, and optimize the use of customer data. Um, and when you translate that into you know, business benefits, you're talking about onboarding new markets, you're talking about improving reporting, having better customer communications, um, but also the impact has been felt across sales, marketing, finance. So this, when we talked at the beginning about it just not being IT, about the whole organisation, this is what we mean. So they're all consuming this information. So and they already had a traditional system, but their more modern digital needs meant that they needed to look at something else, a modern data management approach. And they've been bridging the gap, yes, as we talked about at the beginning of this myth, but they're also bringing in new, new capabilities so that it's part of a core future platform for them. So, mostly because I think there is actually one person between me and lunch, but because I'm starting to get out of breath, <laughs> let's move on to the conclusions. So, uh, to summarise, so we, we talked about, I've talked about three customer examples. Um, I talked about um, at the beginning that digital is no longer a domain that's limited to IT. Uh, its impact can be felt throughout the, a company's value chain. And it can actually really fundamentally change the way organisations do business. Um, but, again, it's not about revolutionising what you do for customers. It's about adaptation and doing what you've always done in most cases, but being better, faster, smarter at it. And the winner of the competition, or this war, as the Marriott CEO puts it, is in fact, firmly in the hands of the customer. So they're going to decide who gets the biggest prize based on who delivers this, this, the best customer experience. I've got people hopping up and down here. So there we go. So the, they will award the prizes to the people that do it. So that's where I think modern data management com it's comes in. Data management itself isn't new. Um, otherwise, we'd all be sitting in this room wondering what on earth we were talking about. Um, but modern data management can help organisations focus on core client needs using technology as an enabler um, and facilitate this incremental approach to updating you know, your core value proposition of your business. Um, and this enables uh, organisations to stay ahead of competition and win this war. And my last word, as it were, if you've been paying attention and you're still awake, you may remember, I think most of you still are, I think you may remember that at the beginning I said I picked up this hard copy and said there were two articles. Well, we've talked about one. One was digital disruption. The other one actually is the one in big red letters, if any of you can see it. Let's, uh, oh, yeah, there it is. It's called the AI-powered organisation. And it interested me because... Um, well, for the same reason, I think it's come up in every single presentation today. Uh, that AI is, you know, where we where we seem to be be going. And if there's one thing that's going to dictate the need for very high quality, clean, mastered data available in real time, well, guess what? It's AI, isn't it? Um, so, even a, a customer experience person that doesn't work in data management would be able to tell you that. And the best quotation of the day, that would be me. Without great master data, you cannot have great AI. Okay, so that's a, you heard it here probably last, I think, <laughs> based on today. So any, um, I would close here with um, this 
invitation to you to come visit the stand, talk to me, uh, talk to any of my colleagues who are scattered about the, uh, the room. And let us talk to you about how you can, how you, your organisation can win in the customer experience economy. And, and thank you all for listening. I will just go to that. Any questions?